What's up, Saiyan Army? And welcome to the new series training to fight like Goku. <laughs> out of my comfort zone. Martial arts has always been something I've been interested in doing, but I always made the excuses like, you know, I didn't have enough energy, too tired, you know. Now I've been bodybuilding for 14 years now, and you know, after a lot of years, it makes me feel a little bit stiff. So my goals for this whole series is to one, get more agile. I wanna, you know, feel lighter on my feet, move around in different ways that I'm not used to. And two, I wanna do, learn the mental aspect of martial arts. There's a lot of huge mental aspect, and I wanna learn, you know, that peace of mind that a lot of these fighters have. Again, we're starting at ground zero. You guys are gonna see me fall a lot. You guys will see me fail. I might krill in a couple times, but we will keep on getting back up and keep on going. I just keep on getting better, which is what this series is all about. So let's go and enjoy the video. Day one, we're here with Dan the man. What? You don't say! Dan, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in martial arts, all that good stuff. Um, I've been training martial arts for over 21 years. I started off with things kids usually start with, karate, taekwondo. From there, you know, I didn't think it didn't feel like what I was learning was gonna work too well for me. Mm -hmm. I needed something a little bit more realistic. I think Taekwondo is effective, but didn't think I'd be able to land a spinning, jumping kick to the head <laughs> in a street fight based on how street fights are. Yeah. So from there, I progressed to Kung Fu. After dabbling in that for a few years, I moved on to Muay Thai. Um, loved the raw power of it, the culture behind it, the philosophy of it. Can you explain to us like the mindset behind like Muay Thai? There is, I mean Muay Thai is the national sport of mm -hmm. Thailand. Mm -hmm. um, it's a huge part of Thai culture. The origins of it go beyond what you see nowadays. Nowadays people see the boxing ring. Before that Muay Thai was used as a self-defense. Okay. Right? The soldiers on the battlefield would use it when they lost their weapons. It would be used to select the king's bodyguards. It was also used to represent your strengths. Each region of Thailand had their own style of Muay Thai. Oh, so they would compete in that style. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Today we're going to be working on the roundhouse kicks, the Thai shin kicks, and also the teep, the Muay Thai front kick. So what I want first is I want you guys to understand your offense. Okay. Right. Step by step, learning the different weapons of the body. Right. Your elbows, your fists, your knees, your legs. Right. Once we understand the offensive techniques, that's when I can start building up your defense. Once you understand defense, we can start blending it all together to a point where you can apply it naturally. Right. So for now, the first part would be just getting you guys moving, making sure your base is solid, and starting off on offense. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Slowly lean forward. Down, good. Yeah. This duel is as a balance drill. Also, it's teaching you a basic defensive posture. What I want you guys to do is I want you to balance on your left leg, knee up here. Okay. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put our elbow on top of our knee, left fist extended forward. What this is doing, roundhouse kick is coming towards Matt's body. His forearm, his elbow, his knee, and his shin are closing up that gap, protecting him. Same thing, one, two, three, four points, closing up this gap. So there you go. And down. Okay, I'm gonna test your guys' balance. This is actually gonna be something we're gonna do each class to monitor your progression. Close the gap, small tap, man. Oh, not that's up there. Day one, it's normal. Small tap. Yeah, later, hard hit, and you'll be able to balance. Yeah. Alright, so what I want you guys to do, put your dominant leg in the back. Front leg, toes are going to be pointed straight forward. Right. Now what you guys want to do is you want to create an angle, right? So right here is about a 90 degree angle. I'm going to split my feet about shoulder width apart. And I'm going to take a small step out to the side. Now Muay Thai, we have a lot of different ways to attack and to defend different weight distributions. Sometimes we're very heavy on our back leg. Front leg's very light, yeah? 
This is a more defensive posture. Easy for me to block, easy for me to tip, easy for me to go in and out. If I'm light here, leg can sweep, right? If I'm heavy on this leg, really heavy, leg keep going, damage my knee, damage my joint. Yeah. If we're too narrow, that's good in a sense, we're a very small target, but it takes forever to attack. It takes forever to kick, all right? If we're straight forward, got everything coming in here, it's a big target. And my hips, no power anymore because I can't rotate. Okay, so you want to find that medium. We're going to be diagonal. That way, we're not a super big target for our opponent. And we can use our back hip to rotate in for power. Muay Thai, we sacrifice here, right? Uh, you guys work out, you guys train. We can train here. Ribs to be strong, body strong. Okay, we cannot train our neck. We cannot train our jaw, we cannot train the temples, right? So our hands are gonna be unnaturally high for martial arts. Here is okay, yeah, we can train. Here we gotta protect, neck and up. We're gonna go into your movement now. What we're gonna be doing, when we move forward, rather than walking straight towards our target, like how we normally step, we're gonna be moving within our stance. All right, the reason for that, if I'm walking towards my target, foot over foot, and I get kicked in the chest, I'm gonna start falling backwards. Here, I get kicked in the chest. I can land in my stance, ready to go. Now we can use our bob of the shoulders, forearms and elbows with the natural bob of our step, okay? Okay, so it's gonna look like this. One and two, one, two, one, two. Small steps, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two and stop. Okay. Left, right, clockwise, counterclockwise. Distance, guys, is gonna be really important next, right? We have our stance, we have basic footwork. Now we need to understand how to move with a partner, an opponent, and understand distance, okay? So if I'm fighting Matt, he can be in his guard stance, I'm in my guard stance. We gotta understand what is too close, what's too far, right? If we're in our guard stance, stance, that stance, and I'm right here, sure, I can hit him, yeah, I can hit him with almost any attack I want, but, he can also hit me with any attack that he wants. It's too dangerous to be that close to someone. Okay, I can be here. Yeah. Here, I'm safe. He cannot attack me with anything. I can't attack him with anything either. Too far, right? So what we want is we want to be just on the verge of danger. He's still safe, but just on the verge. So if Matt's in his stance, okay, don't move. Hands up and stance. Okay, this is a good way to check your um, distance with a partner to see exactly where we want to be. Punch, I cannot hit it. Of course, elbow cannot, knee cannot, kick cannot, yeah, teeth cannot, all right? But if I want to attack him from same distance here, it's just a small adjustment, small step in, bow, kick, small step, teeth, medium step, knee, medium step, punch. Now, on the flip side from here, if Matt decides to step towards me and throws a kick here, it's a small step for me just to clear his kick. All right, so this is where we wanna be. Uh, easy to attack, easy to defend. So if Matt starts moving towards me, I'm gonna control, backing up. I start moving towards him, he's gonna back up. Hands high, chin down. Okay, I start moving counterclockwise. Same thing, notice how his toes are always pointed at me. I take a big step forward, big step back, yeah? Start going this way. He's gonna mirror me all the while, controlling about that distance that we looked at earlier. Okay, Matt, eyes about here. Okay. Eyes focus on the midpoint of the body and turn. Yeah. Sometimes big step, sometimes here. Now if I wanna start cornering him, oh, I sidestep. Sidestep, sidestep. And I start working him to where I want, right? This is gonna be our roundhouse kicks, all right? 
Now I teach this in the beginning not because it's the easiest, but because it's one of the hardest things. The pivot, our weight adjustment, balance, what our hands are doing. Roundhouse kick is gonna be a continuing thing that you're gonna have to work on for a long time. All right, so what we're gonna do, let's face forward towards the mirror in our guard stance. Let's break down the movement first, guys. We're gonna use our lead leg to attack. So Matt, take a step forward, yeah, back step. Yeah, that's it. Okay, now we're in a backward stance. Yeah, we're in a left guard, he's in a right guard. Okay, with your hands staying up, what I want you to try to do, bring your kick around, fall parallel to the ground, waist tight, and come back. Right, it'll look like this. And back. Now, no, no um, target, so no speed, no power, right? This is all technique work. So Matt, go to your guard stance. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one step. Step, up, kick, back, back. Good, step, kick, up, back, back. Step, kick, back, back, kick. Now what we're doing is we're breaking down the technique to its simplest form. Just the rotation of the foot, the roundhouse kick itself. All right, roundhouse kick, kick comes from the side and comes back to its first stance. Is there any certain degree where you should put our front leg? Like should we open it up more or um, just natural. straight? Natural, yeah. So, just let her feel good? So um, what we actually do is we step normal yeah, and we... What we don't want to do is we don't want to step in here and then just bring our leg across. Yeah, there's no torque there. There's no twist of the body. Just using the legs. Knee comes up, leg comes over. Thai style roundhouse kick is different. Okay, now we're gonna be using our body, right? Thai style, we use our head, shoulder, arms, core, hip, and our leg to deliver power for that technique. All right, for now guys, we're gonna keep it simple. What I want you to do, Archie, you too. From your guard stance, I want you to drop your lead, lead arm guard with your rear and back up. Okay, drop and guard. Back up. I'm gonna take my step forward, I'm gonna drop, and I'm gonna guard. And I'm gonna come back to my stance. I step, drop, and guard. And come back to my stance. Step, drop, guard, and back. Back, guard stance. Step, <laughs> drop, guard, back. Back. Perfect. Where your hands go, how your foot pivots, how your knee comes up, how your hip turns into the kick, right? If you can do all that slowly without any target, it'll be automatic when you have to attack. So, let's get right to it. So, tie pads we use mostly for lower body. So, the sweet spot that you guys want to be attacking with is your shin bone, yeah? Not from here, yeah, about here. Here and down. Okay, now when you kick on the tie pads, your shin bone's gonna impact, but no matter what, usually so will your foot. Stand. Okay, now remember, drop that hand. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Slow. Step. Other hand. Other hand. Yeah. Right hand drops. Right. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, whenever you throw a kick, knee, teep, whatever leg is attacking, that same side drops. Right. Slow. Step. That's it. Take eyes on me. Eyes here. Step slow. Height's okay, angle's yeah. okay. Yeah. Alright, good. Bryce slowly left kick here. Up. Okay, again, back to your stance. Right to the center, slow. That's it. And drop your left foot with your right, slow. Okay, height's okay, angle's okay. That's the broken toe, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna go speed, power now. Alright, you guys can hit as fast as you want, as hard as you want. Just try your best to aim for the center. I'll place it upon your shin. Okay, from there I'll give you further instructions. All right, stay in your stance. We're gonna start with Matt. We're gonna jump back and forth. Okay, right kick, left kick, right? Guard stance, and hit. Nice kick. Okay, good. Not bad. I want you guys to exhale the exact moment you make contact. Yeah. Exact moment. Okay. Now when we exhale, we breathe. It's not just slowly getting the air out of our lungs. We breathe from here. Okay. Contracting the core muscles on impact, forcing the air out quickly. Some people breathe through their nose, some through their teeth, some through their mouth. Yeah but explosiveness. Speed, accuracy, power, and breathing. 
Finger and stance. And hit. There you go. That's it. Breathe. Up. Nice. Big difference there. Yeah. Exhale. Up. That's it. That's okay. That's okay. Look at the red spots on your shin. <laughs> Ear down. <laughs> Ear down. <laughs> virgin shin, man. Yeah, virgin <laughs> shin is very good. Normal, yes. Like I said, your feet are gonna sting a little bit. Yeah. Tie pads put together, usually your feet hit, so that's why it's red there too. But you can clearly see where you guys are impacting, right here and down. Strengthening the, the shin, you know, it's a slow, steady process. It's painful. There's no real quick way to do it. The only way the shin bone strengthens is through damage, right? So if you look at these guys' shins now, just from hitting the tie pads, right, we have damage going to their shin, right? Little by little, this won't happen anymore. It should be step by step. I don't want you guys going out and kicking a tree. I don't want you finding a parking meter and just blasting it. Yeah, that's gonna break your shin, which might heal back stronger, but it takes forever to heal, right? Micro fractures we create in the bone, right? To strengthen it yeah, in a safe way, relatively safe way. So we're gonna give your shin bones a rest. We're gonna move into technique number two for tonight, today. It's gonna be the teep, the Thai push kick. Now, when we do the push kick, what I want you guys to think is forward motion, right? The idea here is we're creating space. Three purposes for the push kick, offense, defense, and to set up. Okay, offense, my opponent's in range. I get ready, <coughs> strong push kick to the chest, the stomach, knocking him backwards. Defense, I'm backing up, my opponent is closing distance. <coughs> Front teeth, <coughs> quick rear teeth to keep that space, yeah, just to keep them at bay. Sometimes I might use the front leg or back leg. Yeah, teep, <coughs> elbow, yeah. Teep, <coughs> front house kick. Yeah, so we can set up with the push kicks as well. Today, we're gonna cover offense. Right? We'll get the technique down. Okay, now the common thing with the push kick, a lot of people will do this. Up, up, up kick, like a soccer kick. That's not our goal. We want to kick around here, this area here. I want you to pick up your knee above waist height. Okay, it has to be above waist height. From here, what we're going to do, we're going to push our foot forward and down. Okay, up, forward, knee up, push forward and down. Now, to generate power, just like the other time style kick, we're gonna drop that hand, guard with the other hand, right? So when we do this drill, it'll look like this. I'm gonna use my lead leg, so I'm gonna take that step, like you just, just practice. Step, left teeth, hand back. Step, hand drops, left teeth, back to my guard stance. Step, keep, that's the movement we want though. See how he's not kicking up? Yeah. His foot's going forward, step. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> keep, good, that's the one. Okay, rear teeth is gonna be the same. All right, knee up, foot forward. Hands are gonna work with your legs. We're gonna take that step first with our lead legs. Step and attack, yeah, rather than just trying to attack from here. Step, rear teeth, and back. Take that step, step, back. Step, teeth, yes, back. Step, teeth, back. We can use the full foot here. Full foot has a ton of force knocks your opponent backwards, but has a short reach and the impact is distributed over the whole foot. So it doesn't do too much damage. We can use our heel, right? Heel has force, it does a lot of damage, but short reach, yeah? Hard to aim too. We have to kick higher than usual because we've got to get our toes back, right? More common way is the ball of the foot, just like we were doing earlier. Add you guys tippy toe, right? Small point of contact does more damage, just doesn't have as much pushing force. Yeah, it's like the equivalent of me hitting Bryce in the face like this, or like this. This doesn't have as much force, but it'll definitely do more damage. Yeah, yeah so. Slow. Up. Knee up a little, one inch higher. Yes. Okay, drop and guard. Oh, yeah. Bryce. Yes. Good. Jump that left hand. Go, tip. Oh. Nice, yeah, see that? Tip. <coughs> nice, good kick. That's it. One more time. One more time. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Time. Good. Very good. Okay. 
questions? Front team, rear team, offense. Yeah. No? Very good, guys. It's like our bench squat and deadlift right there. <laughs> Again, what turned me to Muay Thai, it's a beautiful self-defense, it's a beautiful art, deeply rooted in culture and traditions, but it's effective yeah, for street, for self-defense, for competition. All right, so that's the end of the video. Thank you to Dan. Yeah, so shout to Dan. We're gonna link his website down below. So anyone that wants Muay Thai that's out in Oahu, go and hit him up. We're gonna be coming back every single week. Make sure to like the video and let me know what you guys think. And yeah, awesome. see you guys in the next video. Much love, Shantanani. Aloha. Vegeta, what does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000!